what's going on guys welcome back to the last video of the track OWASP top 10 so this track is named baby breaking graduate and in this track we will learn some white box penetration testing we're going to need to download the source code of this project so in order to solve the challenge first we need to go over the source code find the weaknesses and then exploit them with the proper method so we go ahead and start the instance and as you can see here I have the perp ready and running and this is the web page that we see when we first navigate to the site welcome to the grad portal Kenny Baker and Jack Purvis so what ha what's going on here is, is if you read the description of the challenge you will conclude that the professor is refusing to actually pass the students on their graduation projects so what we will need to do here, we will need to find a way to actually make them pass. So to do that, we will need to download the source code of the files, the project, and as well as we will need to understand how this works. So if we turn this off, the perp, and select one of these, say Kenny Baker, you cannot select them, you can just say that I pass, and it's automatically evaluating to nope. It means these students cannot pass. We want to find a method to make these both Kenny and Jack pass. So we're going to take a look at a simple um, request. So basically we turn this on, intercept is on, and we click on the die pass. And let's see a sample request. So the name is Jack Purvis. That's the student selected. And as you can see, it is sending the request to this API slash api slash calculate and as you can see the request is sent using json if we forward nothing happened and we receive nope okay so if we try to navigate to api slash calculate page was not found let's make sure that we get the page correctly slash api slash calculate all right try one more time okay so we cannot access this page all right so so here i have the challenge files downloaded and as you can see after we extract them we get to see all of the extracted files so we have challenge config and let's see what else we have so we have these files if we go to challenge and inspect the index all right let's take a look what's going on here so if we scroll down So I have downloaded the Ilan Rabbik menu, okay, Rabbil English Yars. So I have downloaded the project files and extracted the zip file. So let's navigate to challenge. In the challenge, we go to roots, and in the roots we in we inspect the index, the JavaScript file. okay let's see what's going on here so if you scroll down as you can see this is where it takes the username as an input right it evaluates the the user the student name and here this is the api name api slash calculate and as you can see this is the formula used to calculate the uh score that evaluates either to pass or um fail so that's the formula so if you want if you want to make one of the students pass you just have to play with the formula maybe you have to assign like uh, values to the assignment the exam and the paper so that they evaluate to a number more than maybe one so that you can make the student pass 
And after that, we see an if statement here that evaluates both the student name and the student formula. And based on that, it returns the output, as you can see. So pass or nope. This is the nope and this is the pass. So as you can see here, based on the value of the formula, it always evaluates to fail, right? So what we have to do, we have to play with the parameters, assignment, exam, and paper, okay? To be able to make the one of the students or to be able to make the students pass. But that's not the objective of this challenge. The objective here is to execute code on the server. So as you can see here, both the student name or the object name and the object formula of the student are actually passed to the student helper. Let's take a look at the student helper. CD back, CD to, uh, I guess it's in helpers. Okay, so in the student helper, as you can see, it uses static evaluate. And a static evaluate is very well known to have weaknesses when it comes to handling the user input. So all the time, it's not recommended to use static evaluate or evaluate, okay, to handle untrusted user input unless you are filtering the input. In our case, the as you can as you saw earlier, let's uh, take a look again at the JavaScript file. So if you go to desktop and we go to challenge roots and we open this with maybe mousepad okay so as you can see here both the name and the formula are passed to the student helper which handles or which contains the static evaluate without any kind of filtering okay we don't care about the formula because it's already predetermined. What about the student name? The student name is also actually, as you can see here, we have two names and they are kind of also predetermined, right? But the use of uh, static evaluate here can be the uh, source of uh, like any sort of exploitation. So if you go back to the file itself, helper, and open with mousepad so that's student helper so as you can see we are using static evaluate okay let's go back so here we either manipulate the name or the formula but the name as you can see we have limited options Kenny or Jack again the formula is also predetermined but with the formula we have more space to experiment with different payloads. So if you, if we go to that repo page here, let me grab the link and make sure this is off. I don't want Burp to intercept requests. I am initiating to any other websites. Okay, so this is the source code of static evaluate. And if you scroll down, you can see that there is a test case here and this test case uses this formula here to print the environment variables so what basically happens here is that if we replace if we use that formula here okay to print the environment variables or to try code execution against the server by replacing this with the value of the formula if you go back to the source code here so it's predetermined, but what if we pass this formula as part of the request and we include this value here in the request? It's, just, it's supposed to print the environment variables, right? But instead of the environment variables, we want to actually print something else. We want to print the flag. That's the objective here. And this works, by the way, on static evaluate to versions prior to 2.0.3. If a static evaluate is actually 2.0.3 and after this method will not work all right so let's try that i have already that in my notes here so we're going to try this this one here instead of printing the environment variables we're going to print the contents of the password file 
Okay, let's copy that. And go back to perp. Make this on. And now we will initiate a new request. Did I pass? Oh, it's off. Okay, one more time. On. All right, as you can see, we have only the name, right? Jack Purvis. But again, we said earlier, if we want to use the formula to manipulate the logic of the code, we will want to include these parameters. Okay, so let's do that. So basically, we have the assignment, we have exam, and we have paper. Okay, let's go back to request and assign all of them here. So Jack Purvis, let's use something else. So why do we need to use names that are not Jack or what was the other name? Kenny. The reason is that we have the if statement here. If the if statement evaluates to false, okay, this will not work. So here we will want either one of these to evaluate to true. Okay, we want the formula to evaluate to true here, right? So we're going to need this to be false. That's why we're going to use um, name other than the provided ones. So we go back here and we change this to maybe test. Okay, and then we use exam. Why it's going the other way around? exam let's say it is zero all right and after the exam we have assignment and we have paper we're going to assign the same values right um, we need we need this as again we need the if statement here to evaluate to false because if the if it evaluates to false it's going to say passed so in order to evaluate this to false we will have to make both these conditions false the name should not be kenny or jack and the formula should evaluate to something else let's go back and put all of the parameters equal to zero let me copy that and save the time I want to change this from exam to paper. Another comma. And then the assignment, let's say it can be one. Okay. The last thing is we need to use formula here. So say again formula. Okay. So there we go. Here we, instead of zero, we're going to use this code. Okay, let's fix that. Okay, so as you can see, the formula here is supposed to execute um, or display the contents of the password file. So let's send that to the repeater and evaluate the output sent. So we have a problem here in the request. Let's take a look at this. So, oh, we have this one. Let's cancel the space and send again as you can see we printed the contents of the password file this means we have successfully executed or we have successfully performed RCE or remote code execution on the static evaluate function so the next thing is only to manipulate the command here so let's see, remove this one and see the contents of the current working directory sent and as you can see it displayed the contents of the directory among the files is flag so let's copy the name and display its content to solve the challenge send and this is the flag the challenge difficulty i think it can be six all right Okay, so it worked and that was it guys 
So this track is officially finished. I'm going guys to include all of the resources I used to solve the challenge, including the links to the static evaluate function and other helping pages. Thank you for watching.